Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to now invite young Ahmad Brabagia, Tun Dr. Mahdi Muhammad, the fourth Prime Minister of Malaysia and President of the Pradana Global Peace Foundation to address us. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Norin Mai, yang berbahagia Tan Sri Rais Yatim Wan Sri, distinguished speakers, guests, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Firstly, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the task of uh, introducing the subject for our forum today. And the subject is the new world order, whether it is a recipe for war or peace. We often hear leaders talking about a new world order. And for most of us, when somebody speaks about a new world order, we visualize a better world, a world where we have, uh, we live a much more prosperous life, free of oppression and the like. But actually, the idea of a new world order is not new. It is very old. And you heard from Tan Sri Norin Mai just now, what kind of new world order was first conceived. Basically, it is about having a world government. We should abolish all states, all nations, all borders, but instead have only one world government. And that world government is to be by certain people, elites, people who are very rich, very intelligent, very powerful in many ways, they are the ones who will govern the world. There was not much talk about democracy or choice of leaders. Instead, there was to be a government by these elites who will impose their rules on everyone in this world. And for those who are unwilling to submit to them, there will be punishment. This is the concept initially, but many have not read or do not know about this concept. But it is important for us to remember that this new world order is an old world order. It's something that was conceived more than a hundred years ago. And yet it is being repeated by powerful politicians from powerful countries, that it is new. We should be asking ourselves whether the people who originally conceived this idea has given up hope on achieving a world government. If we study carefully recent history, we will know that there are people who still wish to set up a world government where this government rules the whole, nation, the whole world without regard for nations or states. There would be no borders. And when I say no borders, I'm quite sure you remember the lots of talk about globalization and a borderless world. Globalization and a borderless world is an expression that relates to the concept of the new world order as it was first conceived. They want to have a borderless world and they want to have globalization, which means, of course, without borders, there would be no states, there would be no nations, there would be just one world. 
And that one world will be ruled by whom? There is no mention that it will be ruled democratically by election of leaders. That is left unseen. But what we do see is the dominance of the people who enunciated this new world order. If you look carefully, we see that to a certain extent, this new world order is already with us. We live in a world today that is dominated by the powerful, the mighty, the people with the guns, except that, excepting that the guns now are much more sophisticated. We have reached a stage where certain people have arms which could wipe out the population of this world. The nuclear weapons have that capacity. And the nuclear weapons are in the hands of certain countries and certain people. Therefore, the world is frightened of them. And when the world is frightened of them, the world becomes submissive to them. And when the world submits to them, effectively, there is one government in this world. And indeed, we see the promotion of this concept of a new world order through what is being done today. We know, for example, that politically, there is no freedom for any nation. When we talk about free speech, free freedom of, and human rights, etc., it is with regard to your own national government. Internationally, there is no free speech. If you say the wrong thing, you will be taken to task and you will be vilified in the interna international press, which is under their control. If you say the wrong thing, action may be taken against you. And the wrong things are those said which seems to negate or reject the idea of a new world order which is already in being today. You can criticize your own government but not the power that is running the world today. So, we find that already there is a new world government enforced with powerful military forces and a willingness to subvert and undermine the governments of all countries. Politically, we see them urging every country to undergo regime change, except for those who are already submitting to them. There must be regime change so that all governments in this world would submit to this world power, this world government. And if you refuse to change your government, you will be persuaded through propaganda, through actions including invasion and occupation, and the removal of the head of that government to be replaced by one that submits to the most powerful nation. In other words, the one who will accept the concept of a new world order. This is happening today. We see this in the Middle East. They are fighting each other and installing governments which are unstable. And because they are unstable, they are dependent upon others. And those who can give them support also exert authority over them. So through political means, we are seeing the new world order being carried out. What about the economic power 
that too is being used in order to create a new world order. We see today the idea of a globalized world, a world without borders. That is not so easily done and so the approach in some cases is through various forms of agreement. We talk about free trade agreement. Today we are seeing an attempt to have the TPPA, for example, the Trans-Pacific uh, Trans uh, Partnership Agreement. It's not a partnership. All the countries which participate in this agreement will be subjected to more rules than they ever had before. In other words, the TPPA is not about free trade. It is about trade subjected to all kinds of laws and regulation, exposing countries to being sued in international courts which are set up separately by others. So the TPPA is not about free trade, it is about regulated trade. Once you have regulated trade, then of course the most powerful economy will dominate that, that system conceived under the TPPA. So you can see that an attempt is being made to control commerce, international commerce, and the well-being, the economic well-being of nations through so-called free trade agreement. Free trade agreement which is not free at all. Many fail to notice this because it was called, or it is called, free trade. But actually it should be called regulated trade. But that is not all. We find that if you are recalcitrant, you don't like to conform, then you may have sanctions placed against you. We see already countries like Iran and Russia facing the application of sanctions on their trade with other countries. But the sad thing is that in the attempt to apply sanctions to this country, they have to apply sanctions to even their friends, to even people, countries which are not their target. For example, when sanctions are placed against Iran, Malaysia also faces sanction. Because if we try to trade with Iran, then we will receive a kind, all kinds of punitive action, like closing down our banks and other things. So the attempt to control the, the world through the most powerful nation is already on in not just the political field, but also in the economic field. Then there is the moral values that are being promoted. You are not allowed to have your own value system. You must conform to the new value system as conceived by the powerful. We should have freedom, and freedom should be unlimited. And we see the promotion of values which are against our own beliefs, against our religion. But this we must have because these are the values that is promoted by the most powerful nation in the world. We must allow all kinds of freedom, including equality between men and women, to the extent that there is no necessity for men to marry women or women to marry men. They can marry among the same sex if they so wish. That is against our value system, but we have to accept that also. And there are other values which 
are being undermined because of the need to set up one single system of moral values. The stress is always on equality, on freedom, on freedom of speech. And so we have what happened to this magazine called Charlie Hebdo from France. And because of freedom of speech, this magazine has a right to insult other people. Now, if you allow insulting people as part of the freedom of speech, you will have no peace. I cannot walk up to a person and curse him or call dirty names about his parents simply because it is my freedom. I think the freedom of the people who receive this kind of treatment would be to bash you on your nose. But the interpretation of freedom is that you can say anything, insult anybody you like, because freedom is the most important thing in this system of moral values that is being promoted. So along all the three areas, you see an attempt to undermine everything that we believe in, undermine our politi politics, undermine our economy, and undermine our moral values. When this happens, of course, if all were to accept all this as the, ne the necess necessary thing for our lives, then there would be the need to submit to one single government, a world government. And this world government will govern without our consent. They will govern according to their own concept of governance, their own ideas about freedom, their own ideas about what is right and what is wrong. And when this happens, of course, then the new world order would have succeeded fully. What we are seeing today is a process towards that direction, the establishment of a world government that is responsible to nobody. We would have no choice at all as to who should rule this world. We have to accept the rulers because they consider themselves as the most suitable people to rule this world. So this idea about the new world order is still in place. The new world order meaning that there should be one world government and they should rule according to their whims and fancies. What we are seeing today happening in the Middle East happening in many other countries, including in Malaysia, where interference is being made in the political process of this country, all these are in the interest of establishing the new world order. Now, would this bring peace to us? Or would it cause wars to be fought in many places. We already see wars being fought in the Middle East, wars were fought in Vietnam and in many other parts of the world because of the need for the people who are promoting the new world order to establish their government of the world. And not only wars, we see all kinds of subversion taking place, undermining our moral values to the extent that we become helpless, unable to do anything. And the peace that we will get from this is the peace of the graveyard, because the intention also is to reduce the number of people in this world. At the time when the new world order was enunciated, 
The population of this world was only 3 billion. The intention was to reduce it to 1 billion. Now the population of the world is 7 billion. There will be a need to kill many billions of people or to starve them to death or to prevent them from giving birth in order to reduce the population of this world. This is what is in store for most, for those who will suffer and die, there will be the peace of the grave. But would there be war? Of course there would be war. We are seeing this already. Not wars in the countries which are promoting the new world order, but in other places. The wars are meant to weaken and destabilize small nations so that they will succumb, they will submit to the new world order as proposed by the powerful nations. So both possibilities are there. There would be the peace of the grave or there would be war and the world will be in a state of turmoil. We are very <clears throat> grateful that so many thinkers are here today to give their views of the new world order. I have tried to explain what the new world order is all about, but I am quite sure that we will learn more about the new world order from the eminent speakers who have been invited. So with that, I would like to say thank you to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to launch the international conference on the new world order, whether it is a recipe for war or for peace. I thank you. Thank you to young Ahmad Ragi.